to have you back on Nigeria the size on Plus TV Africa and on this segment we'll be looking at local government autonomy in Nigeria despite constitutional provisions that specify the powers of each level of government in Nigeria local governments are suffering from lack of autonomy still well this is despite the fact that autonomy is one of the prerequisites for a smooth running of the local government system we're joined by Babashola Adebuyi. He is a governorship candidate of the YPP in Ogun State. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And Adek Tokumbo Pierce is back on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. He is the governorship candidate of the SDP in Lagos State. Now, uh, gentlemen, we know that lot, there's been a lot of angling, a wrangling, controversy, and people talking about the need for us to have an autonomous local government system in Nigeria. But that doesn't mean that some people haven't said that it is not right to do that, even though the constitution provides for us to have an autonomous local government administration. And let's start with you, uh, Piers. How would you react to that? What, in, on what side are you? The issue of local government autonomy should be looked within the context of autonomy, uh, devolution of powers, uh, all the way from the federal to the states, to the local government. This is the essence of the argument for restructuring of the system in this country. Without those autonomies for the state as well as for the local government, empowerment of the states and the local government. We do not have a truly federal system. And therefore, things will not work accordingly. If we had autonomy for the states, the evolution of powers, decentralization, it should all go all the way to the local government. By the way, by the constitution, the local government should also make laws, its own laws. By laws. And once it has those laws, and it should also be able to implement those laws, enforce those laws. This is what we mean by decentralization and empowerment of the various categories, levels of government. So therefore, I agree totally, without an independent, autonomous uh, local government, government will not reach the people, and the people will be shortchanged, and development will be thwarted in its infancy. That's the problem we're having view. now. Let's have a view as well, Baba Shola. Um, based on the local government autonomy, if you are to be sincere with ourselves, that it is not well spent in the constitution. Checking the fourth schedule of the Nigerian constitution, it only entails the function responsibility of the local government. But the truth is, in the constitution, there is no financial and political autonomy of the local government. So what is expected of the National Assembly, according to the Constitution Section 166, it states that it is expected of the National Assembly to take that up with the at least 24 states to approve the local government autonomy. And in case they don't get up to 24 states, there is no way they are going. But unfortunately, in the local, in the National Assembly now, we have governors who have left offices and those who are also desiring to go to the governor's office to become governor in the future. And they want absolute power. They don't want the autonomy to become real. But the truth is, if the autonomy does not become real, it means the government will still be far from the people. Okay, former President Lucia Basanjo said uh, sometime uh, last year that anyone or states who are yet to sign the local government autonomy bill are the people's enemy, especially at the grassroots. In fact, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand here because they're out of, according to reports, out of 36 states as of March 2018, only nine states have voted in favor of local government autonomy. So how do we deepen our democracy when these local governments are not allowed to do their job, the, as the Constitution has already stated? The governors are the problem. What is happening is that every local government structure, basically imposed by the, gov by the governor of the state, mm -hmm. and they don't have free and free election. They are selected. 
and they are made local government chairman and all the way to the uh, councillors. And that's where the problem is. And also, what you have in the state assembly of many of these states are similarly individuals who have been planted, they are puppets and agents of governors. So if the governor doesn't want you to vote for the autonomy of the local government, then you do not vote. Because what happens now is that the federation account comes to the state. It's supposed to, if it comes to your account, you're supposed to immediately send it, the portion of the local government to the local government. Mm. But the state keeps the money and gives the local government the, 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 the change. And therefore, there's nothing happening at the grassroots level. The people are being short changed because governors, just as they take uh, a security votes, Lagos State is something like 17.6 7, billion Naira a year security vote. Delta State is 24 billion. And this is an atrocious situation. This is disgraceful. If I am governor, if the governor's forum does not vote to, uh, uh, to, to cancel this security vote, what I will do with my security vote is that I will use the security vote, a percentage of it will go to education, some will go to health, and this is how we use the security vote for the development of the state, okay, not, uh, to, uh, let me... to, not to enrich myself and become so powerful that I have enough money to impose anybody I want into okay. government. Okay, um, let me button here. We know that, according to a report, um, that states and local governments in Nigeria shared 649 billion naira as revenue for December 2018, and that's because the oil price dipped. If it was more, they would have shared more. But we know the problems we have. Government is hardly present in most areas of Nigeria at the local level. So we're looking for solutions. How do we begin to rescue the local government system in Nigeria? We're talking of what can happen with this new elections that we're going to have and how we can move forward to the point where we have local government areas that work. Let me come back to you, uh, Babashola. Yeah, presently, According to the Constitution, we have the state and local government joint accounts. You know, that, was, that of state is not separated from the local government. And that's one of the reasons why the governors decide what to go to what local government. Actually, what they actually send to most of the local government is just a recurrent expenditure of uh, expenditure. But we still have workers who are not paid salaries at the local government well, level. Well, yeah, because the governor the governor mm -hmm. decides what to go there and it is what comes to the local government that the local they government will share. Okay. Now, based on what to do, number one, it has to go back to the National Assembly. They, they have to do something about that section in the Constitution. I think before during the uh, tenure administration of uh, General, uh, President Jonathan, Good luck, Jonathan. There was a bill that was being sponsored to spell out the financial and the political power of the local government. I don't know if it was eventually signed into law. If we have such a thing and there is a separation between the state, in other words, there is a direct allocation for the federal government going to the local government account and not to the state, I believe there will be an independence. But then we don't even have proper local government administration in some states. Don't you think that it starts with actually having elections, local government elections in most states across Nigeria? Well, it's because we don't have the autonomy. That's the political power. The local governments don't have the autonomy, and as a result, the governors decide who become the chairman, the governors decide who become the councillors, and at the end of the day, they all dance to the tune of the governors. Either I like it or not, they dance to the tune of it is what the governor tells them that they will definitely do. So we need to, first of all, go back to the law, to the institution, and do some amendment. Okay. Now, we have Nolge, and um, a couple of them have been lamenting over the years uh, that they could not perform their statutory functions because they've been incapacitated financially by the state government. Uh, isn't this an infringement of some sort on the rights of these local governments? Because government needs to be to, be, to get to those who need government the most. And those people do not live in the cities. They live in the rural areas. 
a, a woman, for example, who needs Medicare or needs to, you know, talk about land grabbing, does not necessarily know where the state house is, but she knows where the council office is or the council secretariat is, or she might even know her councillor, if there be any. So how do we get government to those who need government the most? Do we, the people, have a role to play in insisting for this to be done? Mr. Pierce. I think uh, the point that uh, my colleague here is making is so valid. You cannot change anything unless it's legal, unless you change the law. This is why we, we've been asking for Social Democratic Party has always been campaigning for restructuring of this country. Restructuring simply means true federalism, devolution of powers from the federal to the states to the local government has to be made into law. As it is now, one of the reasons why you cannot have a really independent and transparent democratic election at the state level is because you have local independent um, uh, uh, independent uh, commission. Uh, commission, electoral commission, which is not independent and not even supposed to be called a commission at all because it is solely the control of the governor at his own will. The party in government in any state, Lagos State for instance, everybody you find on the local independent commission is from that party APC. Where is the democracy? Where is fairness? So therefore, nothing is going to happen unless we change the law. And we must, this is why we insist on, elect, the electorate must insist on uh, uh, elected officials that will represent us at the national level where laws can be made. Because we have been impoverished, security has gone down, no service because the law does not allow. The local council, the, the local council is simply a, a puppet, an instrument of the state government as it is now. The point you made about the allocation coming directly to them because you cannot trust the state to give them, the, the local government, what is due to them according to the Federation Account Agreement. So this money must come directly to them. Vis-a-vis, -vis, we must also have independent elections for the local council, not conducted by the state, because the state electoral body is also corrupt. It is a puppet of the state, gone by one governor. And this is where the problem is. Unless these things change, it doesn't matter who is president of Nigeria. It doesn't matter who is governor. Governor can do a little bit more. For instance, if I am governor of Lagos State, you can expect a rebellion against the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We'll, we'll come to that. Definitely you'll tell us your blueprint, um, Justin, um, if you become the governor of Lagos. But then let us bring it back to what can be done because sometimes we say that people have to do this the people have to do that they can insist on the right things being done but we do know that we have community leaders there are organizations and groups that can come together that already have existing organizations that can converge and engage with the government to insist that we have government at the local level. Why aren't we seeing engagements that can birth proper local government councils? What is happening to the Council of Traditional Rulers and other groups like that? They have all let, been let bought. Me... Mm, okay. okay so they have all been bought. Governments that have been in power at the state level have become so wealthy, so powerful, that over the years, all of these organs that you talk that should be speaking for the people are already speaking for the government. They are puppets of the government, unless this changes. You know, when a party has been in power for so long, it becomes absolutely corrupt. This is what we are getting now. The people, what people can do is to vote in individuals who have the interests of the people at heart. And I'm saying this because when you said, uh, you know, I'm not just talking about uh, political propaganda. I'm talking about real governance. If you want to see government reaching the people, you must vote for somebody who believes in it, who believes that local government should be autonomous. 
If, because if you are governor and you are already prepared to go along with the status quo as it is now, then there'll be no change. And then, of course, we know that talk is cheap, but I would like sure. to throw this one at you. If you become the governor of Lagos uh, this year, in 2019, going forward, what changes can we expect to see in local government administration in Lagos State? I will propose to the State Assembly that we make laws that enable the local governments to be independent. I will make a proposal to the State Assembly that the local electoral commission should be bipartisan. I will take it upon myself that the security vote is not my personal money. I will declare to the people how much it is and how much is going to work and how much I am so keeping for myself. So in other words, myself. you're going to operate an open and transparent, this is transparent government. Transparent and honest okay. and committed to the people. Let everybody who is coming to run for governor say that. Then you'll see. You, the people say talk is cheap. You know what I always say? Nobody tells you what they're not going to do. Ask somebody who's running for office whether they're ready to give up their salary to help the poor and the have-nots. Let them answer the question. They'll tell you. Ask them how they're funding their election. Who is paying for all these billboards, all this advertisement? If you are being paid for now, then certainly the man who pays the piper calls it you. You are going to be a puppet of the man who is financing you. This is what you must know. Look, this thing is no, 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 no rocket science. Find out what is going on now before you become governor. Okay, in essence, you're saying that you're self-sponsored and there are no um, influences in your campaign. No influences, nobody financing, no godfathers. nobody calling the tune, no godfather, and we are struggling. But if the people decide to vote for somebody, that can truly represent them, then it's their choice. Okay, and right. let's go now to Ogun State. We, of course, have the governorship candidate of the YPP um, here with us, Babashola Adebui. Tell us, what's your blueprint to change the narrative in the local government administration system in Ogun if you become the governor? Well, when I become the governor, um, the first thing to do is um, to, do, to carry out orientation. I will invite the people, the stakeholders, those that are in the State of Assembly elected, definitely we all have to sit down and all have to understand what we want to achieve. And after doing that, it will be very easy for me to sponsor a bill that will grant local government autonomy in the state. Although presently there is a local government autonomy that has been a uh, uh, bill that has been actually passed in the state, but I've not actually seen the detail of that uh, law. So if we do that, then we should ensure a transparent and independent local government. How do we achieve this? There is a law. Uh, there is a law in the constitution that says that they have a separate commissioner for local government, a commissioner for local government, a local government accountant or whatever, who, who oversees what is happening at the local government. Let everybody take up his responsibility. You as a governor, you, I have to take up my responsibility to ensure the right people or the people that has been assigned uh, a, a duty actually gives a report of what is going on in the local government or at all sectors. But, but some states already have ministries of local governments that are headed by commissioners. Does not in any way change the fact that mm -hmm. there are no local government chairmen, there are no councillors, there are no supervisors for education and blah, blah, blah. There might be, but then they are CDCs, uh, not necessarily elected by the people, not people that you know, have been delegated by their communities and local government areas to lead them. So, I mean, if, even if that is somewhat the we, case, it doesn't change anything, does it? We, we have a problem in this country, and the problem we have in this country is a very simple problem. We know how to assign responsibility. We don't call for accountability. 
We tell, send people out, go and do the work, and that is the end. Mm. We don't ask them how they're able to do the work, how they're able to carry out the uh, work, and they report from that particular task given to them. Mm. So it all depends on the governor or the person who is leading a particular group. Okay, did I just hold your pace? Um, uh, Dr. Adetokum, I'm coming back to you. I just want to step back again. We keep saying that, oh, there, there's nothing in the law that empowers local governments and, you know, brings about aut autonomy. But as, as early as the Obasanjo's uh, administration, we were seeing local government elections. I remember mm. I have voted for two local government chairmen in my state. Sure. So where did this all go wrong? When did the memo go around to say, look, there's more than this thing, no? Shut it down. Let's just put our goons there. When did it all go wrong? When you voted, it was already wrong. When you voted, you voted for you voted in an election that, that was already tainted. Because the governor, the local independent commission, carried out that election. And they always make sure that their people get in office. In fact, there have been many times when the PDP boycotted but that, the but election that not, totally, that, I, I want to disagree that with you. That might not necessarily free. be the same for every state, because I know well, states yes. that uh, well, make a deliberate effort to put their person, they want whoever they want is who will be there. There have been times when somebody was being imposed on them at the primary level, and yes, those people yes. were, ma were kicked out. So yes. I don't think that's detail for it. I don't well, think that's well, general. Look, look, that's just a response to a problem. That is people fighting for justice in spite of the difficulty. The system does not allow for free and fair election at the local government level. If, if, consider this, in any state of this federation, if the local independent commission is being controlled by the state governor, therefore, it is difficult. Look, what happens in the US is what similar that we must copy here, which is even INEC, the board, is made up of two people from uh, PDP, two from SDP, two from APC, the key parties are all represented so that you fight it out there. So Nobody is just going to dictate. What we have now is a president appointing the chairman of INEC at the national level. Who is he accountable to? So we keep talking about all this until these things change. There cannot be any fairness. And at the local level, state level, this is what happens. If the chairman of the local uh, independent commission is an appointee of the governor, and everybody on the board is a, an appointee of the governor, please. That party in government will win, if not all, 90% of the local government. So you're elections. saying that in essence, come March and February, according to you, the APC is going to win 90% of the election. I'm just quoting you. Is that what you mean? Because, because Mr. President appointed the, uh, the INEC chairman. No, no, no. Well, you're talking about... Well, because that's what you just... That's, no, 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 that's, no, no, that's no, no. what you meant but, by but, what you but, said. No, no. What I said is that if the president appoints the chairman of INEC, this is why you have seen on your own show a lot of people saying they don't trust the process. That's the point we're making. And that's the same thing that happens at the state level. You cannot trust the process. It's even more crude at the state level because we are looking at a state that is totally managed by a party in every local government you go, out of 80 to 90% of the assembly is one political party. And if you happen to come from another party, they put so much pressure on you, you defect a year or two into the term because you're isolated. So this is the point we're making. Unless this structure changes, there will be suspicion and true democracy will be a challenge for us. Okay. Well, now, in response to your yes. question, and when we had the election in 1999, um, the INEC actually conducted the state, national, and the local governments. But as a result of some things discovered between the 1999 and 2003, 
the National Assembly now sponsored another bill, which they eventually passed into law, into heart, whereby denied the local government the autonomy and gave the state government the power to have an independent electoral body. So that was the beginning of the problem we are talking about today. So what we have to do now is to go back to what it was in 1999, whereby each of the three tier uh, government has the power, has the autonomy to 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 has the autonomy to rule, has the autonomy to uh, carry out their responsibility without depending on the state or the federal government. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been so great um, talking with you both on this very important issue. We hope that going forward, after the elections, that we'll have a better local government administration in Nigeria across the board. We've been speaking to Baba Shola Adebui. He is the governorship candidate of the YPP in Ogun State. Thank you so much for joining us. We've also had Ade Tokumbo Pierce. He is the governorship candidate, SDP Lagos. We wish you well in your aspiration. Don't forget to share with us your thoughts on any of our social media pages, on Facebook and on Twitter at Plus TV Africa. Well, that is all on Nigeria Decides tonight. It's been great, you know, been an interesting, uh, talking about all these interesting issues. Mm, yes, of course. And I'm sure that you who's watching, you have learned a lot. And of course, uh, as much as we want to inform and uh, educate you, we also try to bring some entertainment. I hope we did entertain. We hope so. Well, <laughs> join us again on Monday for more interesting discussions on Nigeria Decide. I am Mary Adam Cohn. And I am Ifi Arona. Have a great evening.